Good afternoon, guys. This is the tackle, wrap up, assessment, whatever you want to call it, video of the Awunga trip that we just went on. So, uh, not 100% sure on how many parts is going to be in that series, but I dare say it's probably going to be a four part series. So, if you haven't already seen any of the previous parts to this video, uh, I'd definitely go have a look at them. We got a few fish, I wouldn't say a lot, but we did pretty well. So this episode, basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the, uh, the tackle we used, uh, where we sort of went, what we hit, what we did, um, a few little things that worked for us and basically, yeah, just sort of like a summary or a wrap up of everything, um, that's gone down. Um, you know, a jab at a little bit more content, if you will. So, <laughs> Let's get into it. So, yeah, let's get into it. So, basically, uh, we spent five days, well, six days, five nights up there at uh, Lake Wonga. We went out and we sort of, first couple of days, we did struggle a little bit. Um, we sort of had to adjust to the fact that it was blowing southeasterly on the dam. Um, I'm not sure if anyone on this channel is familiar with uh, the dam itself, but basically, yeah, southeasterlies. We found, like, in the end, it was actually good having southeasterlies. So, yeah, once we worked that out, we kind of worked out a few points and stuff like that. We did have inside help or outside help, if you will, from a couple of mates and friends and stuff like that. Because you go up there for, like, five days, you kind of want to have a little bit of an idea of where the fish are, what the fish are doing. And believe you me, this is the first time I've fished a longer. I'm not an expert or anything like that. So, I was, I was happy to take the help where I'm where I needed it basically. So not ashamed to admit it. It's okay to, you know, you, you're not gonna catch fish otherwise. Well, you may catch fish, but you may not catch as many fish. So uh, yeah, so first couple of days in, we didn't do sort of too well. We got a couple of smaller fish, um, as I'm sure you've seen already, the uh, 98 centimeter barrow that Bo got on the first full day there. Uh, he was also unfortunate to lose a couple of fish on this trip as well, which is a bit of a downer, but you know, that's, that's barrow fishing. You can't really do a lot about it, but quick beer break. Mm. Uh, yeah, so uh, we also got another little bit of inside help from a couple of guys that were staying next to us at our cabin there at the uh, Awunga Gateway Lodge, um, who I'll mention again later. Uh, the, yeah, basically the guys from Fish Tech Solutions or the, um, yeah, one of the Fish Tech Solutions guys there, he did sort of give us a little bit of inside help on where to go find the fish and where they were sort of holding, what they were eating, and, um, he had get, he even gave us, um, a pack of lures to try. So, if you're not already familiar with the brand, uh, Castaic Swim Baits, they're an American brand of swim bait. They're a large swim bait, paddle tail, whatever you want to call it, soft plastic lure. They're about seven inches long. Basically, yeah, he sort of gave us an idea of where to go, what to use, and uh, surprisingly enough, it actually worked really well, and we actually, well, we caught fish. I caught fish. Bo caught fish. We, we did really well, so, um, yeah, I, yeah, other than that, yeah, we had a couple other, you know, fish throughout the trip and stuff like that, but... Yeah, it was, it was tougher than I was expecting. Well, it was a little bit tougher than what I was expecting, but at the same time, I was happy to catch a fish. Like, I was just happy with one barrel of money for the trip, to be honest. Like, it was a nice getaway fish, fishing trip for a couple of weeks. Not a couple of weeks, a couple of days. So, well, let's move into the tackle, rods, reels, all that sort of stuff that we used. So, the Jerky J swim bait um, being what did most of the damage, uh, mainly because like I got confidence in it pretty early on. I started off using the uh, the smaller four inch or five inch model, sorry, five inch. And uh, yeah, managed to pin my first barra for the trip on that. Uh, and then, you know, moving up to the seven inch later on in the night in the, uh, the smoky, what was it, smoky shad? Smoky pepper. So uh, yeah, we yeah, ended up moving up to the uh, smoky pepper and later in the night and that seemed to that seemed to have most of the success but basically uh we yeah sat in one of the spots there fish for most of the night blah 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 blah, blah. lost track of me lost, lost me train of thought didn't i lost me train of thought 
but yeah, that's basically what we did. Uh, we did do a little bit of altercations, and you know, as you do, being a barra fisherman, if well, as you barra fishermen do, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a diehard barra fisherman, but I, I did enjoy it. Uh, we did a little, uh, little alteration. So we've actually used an assist hook threaded through the back there, just above or just behind the tail. Uh, not, it doesn't impede action or anything like that, just in front of the tail, I should say. It doesn't impede the action of the lure, and basically just tied that off to the main jig head with 80-pound uh, um, platypus hard armor. And surprisingly, it was actually quite a successful combination. I like to call it the, uh, the Bo Rickson special, if you will. But it did, it did work. That assist hook uh, probably maybe two, three times actually helped. Uh, keep a lot of fish. The fish that I lost to the boat was pretty well only pinned on the assist hook after the barrow had swallowed and thrown the lure at the same time. That doesn't really make sense. After he'd swallowed the lure, he'd gotten up, done a couple of thrashes almost through the lure and I'd pinned him. Uh, obviously, didn't quite get it in the boat, but that was the last hook to come back. So yeah, uh, but yeah, Fish Tech Solutions, Castaic, uh, swim baits, so they really they worked quite well. Like uh, once we worked out technique, managed to get that slow roll speed just right. Um, yeah, they they were quite successful, and I would definitely recommend them to anyone else, uh, especially after throwing a lot of the other lures that I was throwing. Like um, I didn't have a great deal of success with a lot of the other lures. That being the old Zerg Life Knot. That's the other one that uh, I tried out a little bit on the lighter gear and didn't have a lot of success with it. Uh, not for a lack of trying. <clears throat> ah. And you know, the old faithful Mollocks. Um, to anyone out there that knows the old Mollocks 140 um, swim bait. <laughs> I caught a caddy on it, and Bo did get his 98 on it, so they do work. But yeah, basically, I, I don't know, I liked it. I like the action that it had, but I did find, you know, obviously quite heavy. If you're not fishing super deep water, it's probably not really successful. You do tend to get a bit of weed, so you've got to pick up your slow roll speed. And I found that the slow roll speed that I was going with to get any nibbles, get the nib, was uh, a little bit too slow for the Moloch. So they're successful, they have their place. Uh, obviously, not an expert, that's just my opinion, so. Take it as you will. I'm also hooked up, so uh, that travels quite good. Now, jig head for the uh, Jerky J Shad. We ended up running with a lighter 3 8 size jig head. Just sort of, you want to run as light a weight as you can so that the lure can suspend for as long as possible without sinking too quickly and digging into the weed. And it's sort of a little bit of a complicated process, like working out weights and sizes and stuff like that you also need to make sure you've got a big enough hook cave. Now, once again, not an expert, but <laughs> once again, not an expert, but the uh, the hook cave definitely makes a difference. I've got the, uh, I believe it's 6 uh, hook cave. Uh, it helped, it definitely helped uh, with hookups, I guess you could say. And then, you know, that strength of the TTs we found were quite, quite good. Um, Rambling a little bit, so moving on. We also ran with, where is it? I can't find it. Aha! One of the other styles that we ran with was the uh, the old Baramba jig head. Bar Baramba jig heads. Baramba. Uh, Bo actually hooked up to, I uh, believe it's two fish with this uh, style of jig head. Not the best, eh? If, you know, once again, personal opinion here. We found that it actually stretched out pretty easy. He didn't lose any fish on it. Uh, but yeah, the gape of the hook, whether the metal's slightly softer, don't know. It, it also picked up on the troll, so there would have been a fair bit of pressure on the fish itself. Yeah, there's a few different factors there, but at the end of the day, the hook did spread out a little bit. Uh, the hook point rolled as well, which, you know, it, when you're talking about trying to catch a meter plus fish, like you don't, you don't want too many one percenters letting you down, and that's two one percenters there. So you know that's two percent chance that you're gonna lose that fish. You just don't want it to happen, do you? So <laughs> once again, not an expert, but just a few little things that we noticed during our sessions and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, as you can see, I went in quite uh, guns blazing. 
had the uh, the Molexes and the live mullets all ready to go, all pre-rigged. Uh, we ran the, uh, I ran, sorry, BKK uh, size 2 stingers, no, vipers, sorry, vipers. Uh, just with a 50 pound split ring, uh, nothing special, just upgrades, just to secure a fish, basically, that 1% extra. Not that I caught any on uh, the mullet or the uh, mollux, so. And there it is, the Smoky J Shad. Uh, they actually, they come fully silver, but what we used was a little chartreuse pen there. A highlighter, if you will. Pretty sure I got it here. There you go. What do they call it? The old spike at dip and glow. Uh, definitely do this outside, because that stinks so bad. The old garlic smell is not desirable. So, yeah. That's the Juki J Shad, Castaic Lures. Uh, tackle. Rods, lines, leaders, all of that sort of stuff. Try not to stick my rod tip in the fan if I can. Uh, but basically, uh, I, went, I ran quite light on the gear, if you if you would want to say that. Um, I ran a blade and tails, a 710, I believe it is. Sorry, 6.8. I ran a 6.8 blade and tails, 6 to 20 pound. Uh, really good rod. I love fishing with it, like you, it's a really light action rod, you can feel a lot of the vibration on that through the lure, especially when you're trying to get that slow roll just right without touching the weed, but at the same time trying to make sure the lure is still working and you get that combination like I found, uh, yeah, I just found it to be a lot good, uh, a lot gooder, a lot gooder. Uh, now that's a one piece and that length really helped put the hurt on the fish when it come down to it and all of the fish that I caught was on this setup. Uh, that's not to say that I wouldn't have minded catching some other fish on the other setup, but, but yeah, basically running that with a uh, Daiwa frames in the 3000 size, uh, it's only got about, was it, I think a 300 meter capacity at about 15, 20 pound. From memory, it's got about six to eight kilos of drag. So it handled everything really well. Bigger fish, probably not so well, but but you know, anything around that, you know, 75 to about 90 to shy of a meter, definitely a good setup. Well balanced setup. Very nice, very light, comfortable to fish. Uh, it only took a little while to get that perfection right there. So once again, not an expert. Amateur. Incredibly amateur. It's just I'll put a lot of hours in, that's a big thing. So once again, try not to hit the fan. Alright, now onto the swim bait combo. It's got a little bit of cat fur on the end, which is uh, a bit concerning. But we ran with the Shimano Jewel. Shimano Jewel. The guys down at Charlton's helped me out with uh, setting up, getting together this rod and reel setup. So Shimano Jewel 7 to uh, 7 foot 2, I think. 7 foot 11. So it's quite a big rod, <laughs> especially when you, you know, you're up a river, up a creek or something like that. But you know, out on the dam, not too bad. Very comfortable to fish with once you sort of get used to it. Uh, line weight's about that eight to 15 kilo. And then you can throw lures probably about two to five ounce, I think is uh, about all it's rated to. Yeah, two, two to five. But yeah, it's a, it's a comfortable rod. Like I quite like it. Um, surprisingly enough, it's not actually paired up with a Shimano reel, it's paired up with the Daiwa Alexa WN, I believe, in the 300, yeah, 300H. Uh, really nice reel, I quite like it. It's got the upgraded uh, wing. It's it's just a comfortable reel. It's a comfortable reel to use. I quite like it. It's aesthetically appealing. Uh, lightweight, drags on, drag on it is really good. Very comfortable to throw, especially when you're throwing around Molluxes and the larger swim boats. Uh, now, I didn't throw around the, uh, the old Castaic too much, but uh, it would handle that very well, very easily. I just sort of wanted to be able to feel that uh, vibration a lot better, that's why I ran the uh, lighter setup. However, I digress. I would definitely also recommend this combo. Not that I have any professional opinion, it's just from the short time that I've used it for. Uh, now, lines and leaders. So. As for the uh, the Daiwa slash Shimano combo, uh, just running 40 pound uh, J braid, Daiwa J braid, and that's to a 80 pound uh, platypus hard armor leader. Now this is a FC fluorocarb mono composite leader. Uh, 
we didn't get a lot of didn't get a lot of fish hooked deep. Let's put that down. So there it is there. We didn't actually hook a lot of fish down deep, but it still handled the job quite well. I used it to tie off the uh, stinger assist hook on the castag, and that quite often got down in the mouth and that of the fish. A little bit of light buffing, but not too bad. Um, I wouldn't really want to go too much lighter, maybe a 60 pound um, FC, like a fluorocarbon leader, maybe. Once again, not a professional. Now that's 0.8 of a mil thick, so it's not too bad, and it's quite a supple feeling leader, so like it, it feels probably more like a mono, but it has quite a high abrasion resistance, like if you like if you were carbon. So definitely would recommend, would recommend. Uh, give it a couple of months and a couple of lost fish, maybe not, but for now, I would recommend that for the dams. But yeah, that sort of pretty well sums up. Oh, that's right, sorry, light gear setup. Uh, 20 pound Jaloa J braid on the Daiwa J braid grand, sorry. 20 pound Daiwa J braid grand on the light setup. Uh, that tied off to the 80 pound hard armor as well. Your shoes are a little bit loose. Uh, that's tied off to the 80 pound uh, leader as well. So 20 to 80 pound. It works, it's fine. The FG itself doesn't get caught up too much as long as you're using heavier lures. Now, if you're gonna go a lighter lure, obviously you wanna downgrade that leader because you do find you get a fair few tip wraps and guide wraps and stuff like that and you don't really wanna have that stuffing you up too much, especially if you get it out there and you cast it in a little way out and a barrow just comes along and so happens to take it, you know, and there goes your, there goes your guides or there goes your rod tip. Stuffs it up a little bit. Honourable mentions goes to the uh, Stink Finger. Now, they're a new product. Very good. I'm sure you've already seen it throughout the videos. Uh, this one got a fair bit of bloody use over the old trip. So, it's, you know, as you can see, it's fairly well worn in. So simple to use. Like, you know, you just come through, dip your lure in. It's got a little slot at the top so your line doesn't actually get damaged, crushed, rubbed through. Uh, yeah, and you can fill it up with whatever scent you want. So I've just got the uh, Procure Shrimp, I'm pretty sure it is. Just laced it up. I've used a fair bit of it, it's actually drying out a little, so I probably might put some more in there, but yeah, no stinky fingers. I don't get it all over my hands, I don't get it all over my reels. Um, easy to clip once you've worn them in. They, they are a little bit tight when you first get them, so it's not too bad, but you know, flick your line out, pull back in, go to put it in. Quick squeeze, take your lure out, you just lock it up straight on your thigh if you're that worried about having to put everything down and try and clip it up. Clip it up, jam your finger in there, but yeah, the old thigh clap gets it every time. At the end of the day, that's fishing. We had a good trip all around. Uh, I would like to mention that, you know, Fish Tech Solutions, they did help us out a fair bit and they gave us a couple of lures to try out. That was huge help that they gave us, so a lot of credit goes to them as well. And I'd also like to say that Awunga Gateway Lodge, if you're going up that way, it is a really good place to stay. The cabins are all self-contained, they've got all the cookware, bedding, everything you want to do, sorry, everything you need uh, when you're staying up there. And they're relatively cheap uh, as well, so that's, that's always a bonus. So I'll leave a link for them in the description below. Definitely go, um, I would say definitely stop there if you're going to go up there. And that about brings us to the end of the video. So if you liked this video, guys, if you liked the series, drop a comment below, thumbs up as well. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It's really good to know and it's good to see you guys supporting the channel and coming along for the ride. Like I'm enjoying doing this other sort of content. You know, away trips are always fun. So if you like the away trips, Every once in a while, it doesn't have to be all the time. You know, I know a lot of people out there love the thready videos, so we're gonna try and get a little bit more content coming out to you guys in the near future. But thanks again, guys. It was a great trip, and that brings an end to the uh, the Awunga series. All right, guys. See you in the next video. Peace. And they're actually they're quite a good swim bait. They're large. Oops.